little rundown on steering and suspension so you can understand some of the basic stuff. This is actually, some of this stuff came from an old uh, GM publication that was put out a long time ago, but it's still pertinent today as far as your angles and all that. Here's your short long arm suspension. I showed you this the other day. You remember that? How you had a long control arm and a short control arm. That's your short long and the springs in between here. Unless it's four wheel drive, and if it's four wheel drive, you'll have a torsion bar, you know, that's coming, is going back like y'all got on another one. Torsion bar opens this area up so that an axle can go through here and drive it from a wheel. And if first and strut, now right here, I want you to look at this. We're going to talk about this a little more. See, if you draw a line between those two ball joints right there, that's your steering axis, okay? Now the, the relationship between the upper and the lower ball joints has got a lot to do with caster and camber, and I'll explain that in a little more detail in a minute. But this right here, on most of your McPherson struts, not all of them, but on most of your McPherson struts, they'll have a lower ball joint, and they'll have that strut going up, and the steering axis will go right through the center of that strut on most of them, not on all of them. There's a difference in there. Some of them, like on your Honda cars, some of your early Ford Fusions had a wishbone affair down here, and they had an upper and a lower ball joint, but the weight of the car was carried on this wishbone, it was hooked to the lower control arm. Now there's your zero reference right here on your angles, there's your vertical, and there's your center line. So you got to remember this. This is going to be on your final, don't zone out on me over there, you see where I'm going? Alright, your center line and your zero reference, this is really important whenever you're doing that. Now your zero reference is still here even though your tire is sloping out. That's positive camber, that's negative camber. Is that clear? The change is going to be made in, in the relationship, like on some of, most of the newer vehicles, they actually have eccentrics right here where you can basically loosen them up and turn them and that moves your uh, ball joint in and out. Uh, usually, the, on, on a lot of the earlier ones, the top ball joint would be moved in and out by moving that A-frame using eccentrics or shims or something like that. So, uh, they basically have this, they just canted the tires, but basically the only way you're going to get any positive camber is by moving that. By moving that. And sometimes you'll get negative camber if the spring gets weak and that tire will go in like that because of a weak spring. Alright, so your, the load's got to be projected toward the center of the tire. All right, there's your zero reference there. The load is projected toward the outside of the tire. What kind of camber is this? Positive. Positive camber if it's leaning out. Uh, the way that I remember that is uh, it's a positive thing because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So if it's leaning out, it's given, right? There you go. All right, so negative camber, the load's on the inside of the tire. And that's where your wear is going to be. See how it's showing the tire tre tread wear in there? So you got zero degrees here, excess negative camber. Uh, and also it's going to try to pull the weight. If I got a tire and I'm going to lean it that way and I roll it, it's going to go off in that direction, isn't it? All right. Now, trim height is basically going to be measured from here to here. You like that? How would you do that accurately? I don't like trying to measure from the ground to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the, the rim right here to that fender. And if you go from there all the way around to each corner of the car, it ought to be the same from side to side. Not necessarily front and rear, but side to side it should be. Right? If it's not, you got to figure out what needs to be done to straighten that out. All right, there's your correct trim height. There's your incorrect trim height. See how that little, if the spring is weak, see that spring right there is weaker and a little squeeze more? That'll cause you to have negative camber and cause the adjustments. You can replace the spring, you know, and that kind of thing. But uh, typically, most of the time, springs don't get replaced. They just keep getting, uh, and sometimes you get, uh, sometimes adjustments are, uh, it's not set up for adjustments. It'll tell you if you do put help for adjustment in the machine over there, it'll say no adjustment for camber or no adjustment for caster. You can also, in that machine, in, the, uh, in there where you can go into all data on that machine over there, and you can actually go to alignment on the vehicle you're working on, and it'll tell you about camber and caster and how you're, made, how you're supposed to adjust them. Now, the older units, and I, these right here were real aggravating, but that's what they had for a long time. And Chevrolet kept this on some of their uh, little uh, small pickups up into the 2000s. Uh, but they, they got these little shims here. Now, obviously, if you add more shims, that's going to move this ball joint this way, isn't it? If you take some shims out, it's going to move it that way. Well, it depends on where the shims are. You know, and if the thing is set up for the shims to be in between here, you know, in between there, so you add shims, it's going in. You Take the other shims that's going out. You got to figure out which way you're wanting to go with that. If you're moving that out and in, what angle are you changing? 
We were just talking about negative and positive what? Camber. Okay, so if you're going to move it out, that's going to be change your camber. If you move it forward and back by leaving these shims alone and taking some of them out, or adding some and leaving these alone, that's going to change caster. Because the front and the rear relationship with the ball joints is what gives you your caster. All right, there you're adjusting bolts for camber. A lot of the times you can get, well, in some of these things, they'll have this real uh, stupid thing where they'll say, uh, take this uh, shock off and egg shape those holes. Or egg shape, you know, the bottom holes or whatever. And so as you egg shape those holes, that way you're able to change your camber if it's a strut. You know, and I've actually had to do that on a Mustang. So you can sometimes, you can order a replacement strut and it'll come with egg shaped holes for adjustments. But a lot of times you may order a strut and the holes will be as round as they can be. And so, you know, if you're, you get to that point, you know, send that new strut back and you're going to egg shape the holes using some tool of your choice. It's not really a good idea to use a torch on that because you got to compress gas in here and all that. You know, you can cause an explosion or something. So be careful about the way that you decide to go about that. There are tools you can get that will egg shape those holes safely. And so just, you know, we think about that. Uh, but anyway, there are also kits you can buy from the park store that will have egg shaped uh, bolts that will help you adjust that. And that's where you pull these bolts out and you know, put some more in there. Um, a control arm, support tower, you know, you got a center support sag going on there. See, there's different things. You got extra weight there. Extra weight, like if you put a bigger motor in a car that was supposed to have a four cylinder in it, the suspension was set up for a lighter engine, it can cause your alignment to be out because you got too much weight in there and that's squishing the springs and now you're getting this. See what I'm saying? All right, you replace, you can replace with an offset inner shaft on some of these, you know, that's the ways to do that. But, a lot of the time, most of the time when you're getting an alignment done at the tire store, it's got, it, they'll actually check your all your angles and then they'll just set the toe and that's what your 2995 special is. You know, but if somebody's really serious about it, we'll set all the angles and make it drive right. Uh, extended positive camber results in a cone and it's going to pull that way. Um, all right, so car pulls toward positive camber. Remember that. Now pull side of the top toward the side of positive camber. Additional camber on the left wheel to counter road crown. Road crown is not what it used to be. You know, the road crown being the center of the road they, for the water to run off. Now roads are flatter than they ever used to be. Uh, if you let go of the wheels driving down the road on a reasonably flat road, it should not, if it's going to drift, it should take more than six seconds to change lanes. That's according to Honda. You know, but anyway, uh, now I've heard it, now they're ready to not, there's something else, something got to be done, and I'll tell you about what they're doing. Uh, now this right here is your caster. There's your vertical reference. There's your steering axis. That's your two ball joints or your uh, strut or whatever direction of travel being this way. Uh, this right here, if the steering axis is like that, it's going to affect it. You'll find out on cars that didn't have power steering on them, the, the caster settings are different because if you've got a slightly more vertical caster setting, it's easier to steer it if you don't have power steering. It's also squirrely though whenever it's like that. So you got to be you know, careful about how you set that. Lower ball joint, upper ball joint. That's steering axis for short, short long arm suspension. There's your positive caster, and there's your negative caster. See? And the relationship with the bottom, if the bottom ball joint is back, there's a weight you know, behind that one, you're going to have a negative caster, and this is going to be positive caster that way. And so this angle right here doesn't typically wear tires, but I will tell you that even if all the numbers are in the green, it's always going to pull toward the side with the most negative caster and the most positive camber. If your camber is positive but in the green, if your caster is negative but in the green and it's on the same wheel, it's going to pull that direction even though everything's in the green. Tires can cause it to pull too. So sometimes if you think all the alignment angles are fake but you've got to pull, swap your tires from side to side in the front and see if it pulls the other direction. You'll be surprised how many times that happens. Tires will look good and cause it to pull. Right. Steering axis, zero reference, there's your load right there. There's your you know, load projection, so to speak. Now this right here is something that you're probably not going to be thinking a whole lot about typically when you're aligning the car, but this is the principle here. Uh, you notice the load's in front of the wheel. You know, that's a table with positive caster. Look where the load is. Look where the wheel is, look where the load is. See that? And so what makes it positive or negative is where the load is in relation to where the tire is touching the ground. That makes sense? 
you know, let me back up for a second. See where the load is when it's on negative caster? Well, look where the load is when it's on positive caster. And see, there's positive caster with a cat with a wheel on a shopping cart or whatever. You got it? All right. Forward force, the load's behind the wheel, that's the negative caster. And you can see how that'll shimmy. Don't you love it when you get a shopping cart where one wheel's doing this all the time? <laughs> yeah. All right, so the steering axis goes through the ball joint or the strut. I told you about that already. Pull, leaves positive caster is when it pulls. In other words, if the caster's more negative on that side, it's going to pull that way. This caster's causing it to pull. All right, here's your wishbone style. Uh, you see this right here, what I was telling you about that? Honda's and Ford Fusions and some others have his wishbone that's connected to the lower control arm, and they'll have a ball joint here. Now the steering axis on this doesn't run through the strut, it runs through these two ball joints. That makes sense? Anytime you see that wishbone, you can actually be sure that you're, you know, that right here is going to be your steering axis. And it's not going to be related to that. As a matter of fact, the other kind's got a bearing on top of the strut that carries the load of the car when you're turning the wheels. This one doesn't have to have a bearing because it's not actually carrying the axis of the car is not turning on that strut. Just keep that in mind. Steering axis is zero caster. If you ever get in front of a car and you happen to be a tape measure, you have a tape measure in front of the car, and you have somebody turn the wheel all the way to the left, the car is going to raise up. You turn the wheel back to the middle, it's going to go down. You turn it back to the right, it's going to raise up. You know what that does? That makes the steering wheel want to go back to the center. Right? Make sense? So if it's raising up both ways, it's always going to go, go to the point of least resistance, which is meant, and that's why it centers when you're coming out of a curve. I mean, you know, it, it kind of wants to go to the center anyway, if it's, got, if it's set up right. And there's your steering axis at positive caster. And there's your positive camber and negative camber. See if they're both leaning that way, you know. But it actually changes in a turn as a result of positive caster. See, this is actually, the camber's going to change if the caster is changed. That makes sense. So, you, I mean, all these angles affect each other. Now, always remember when you're doing an alignment, you're always going to start with the, with the uh, rear, the, the toe, and the, on the rear is really important. And start on the rear, go to the front, and then set, you know, caster, camera, and then toe in that order if you do it the right way. All right, so vehicles drive at low speeds in parking lots will wear the front tires out more quickly. These vehicles that, these trucks the maintenance people drive, when they curve in around between these buildings out here, they'll wear a set of front tires out in short order. Because you're always, have you ever been pushing a car and somebody's trying to steer it? And when they start to turn it, if they turn it too sharp, all of a sudden it gets more to go. Because their tires are scrubbing trying to stop the car. Okay, we're going to think All right, when turning the inboard wheel, always turn it a bit sharper because it's making a, a smaller circle. Can you remember toot? Toot. Toot out on turns. The tires spread out a little bit in the front, no matter which way you're turning. The inside on the turn always turns a little sharper. Toe out on turns. Toot. Remember that. Shoulder of the tires carry the load. Both tires wear more quickly. Load shifting from center of the tire to shoulder. See that? Negative camber, positive camber. You can see how when the load's not where it's supposed to be, not in the center of the tire, how it's going to wear the tires out. It's going to cause it to pull, it's going to cause it to do all kinds of stuff. Now, both of these, when excessive, will destroy the tire. Toe out or toe in. If it's towed in, dragging the tire sideways down the road. Either way. Measured in inches, measured in degrees. Some front end people would rather measure the alignment in degrees, and some would rather measure it in inches. It's just all according to personal preference. A lot of times your machine will let you pick whichever one you want. All right. Zero toe, right here, thrust line. Can you remember the thrust line? I was driving my 74 Ford pickup one time. When I bought the truck, it had some overload springs on it. I didn't like it. Somebody had put longer bolts in there. So I took the overload springs off because I didn't like it riding so hard. I took the extra leafs out they put in there so it would ride like a regular, you know, good riding pickup. And I put some bolts in there, like grade five bolts. That's what I had in my toolbox just laying in there tighten them up, but they weren't really strong enough to handle all this shearing force. And I was driving along sometime later, probably a year later, and I hit a bump wheel and it sheared that bolt and the axle got crooked under the truck and all of a sudden I'm having to turn the wheel like this. And the truck's dog tracking down the road. The thrust line had changed on that truck. Toe in, wear on the bias belted tire. See that? 
If you drag your hand across the top of that tire and you feel like saw teeth, it's got toe wear because it's been dragging around the road sideways. Right? Now, dragging the tire sideways isn't good for the tread on either tire. Toe is important. All right, the toe angle is exaggerated here, but the front wheel drive cars will be slightly towed out because when they're pulling, they tend to tow in a little bit. So a lot of times they'll be setting this out a little bit. Front wheel drive cars, because it's pushing those tires, they're going to be towed in just a little bit so it'll push them out straight. See what I'm saying? You're compensating for that. I can, Dakota's soaking all this up. I can see wheels are turning. <laughs> all right. Non-adjustable angle. Non-adjustable angle is something you cannot change. Even if you see that it's out of uh, whack, you can't change it. But you can measure it if you got a good front end machine. All right. Toot is an angle that's built into the steering geometry. You cannot change it. Unless you want to, you know, if you start jacking around with it, you're going to start making big trouble for yourself. It's actually designed in by the people that build the steering system. And there's a lot more to it than think there is. Turn an angle for left front wheel. See? Less than 20 degrees, 20 degrees. See, when you're turning it, you can actually measure it with the turn plates on that machine out there. You can turn it back and forth and look at the plate on both sides and see what those degrees are, but you got to make sure they start with zero. All right. And then there's your, you know, you're basically, it works the same way both ways. No matter which wheel on the inside, the inside turn is, is going to be, but it's making a smaller circle, it needs to turn farther, right? That makes sense? Okay, now, be able to draw this. You be able to draw this? I'm going to ask you to draw this. You better be able to draw it. I'm going to say draw a picture of steering axis inclination. You may have that as a part of your final. Can I give you a verbal exam? Or you got to sit down without notes and answer my questions. You gonna be able to do that? Yes. You better be able to. That's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. All right. Steering axis inclination is right here. You cannot adjust that. The non-adjustable angle. All right. The included angle is steering axis inclination plus positive camber. See if you put all that together. You know, just go figure that. You know, plus your camber. And you put all that together, you're gonna have an angle that's. See, that's actually supposed to be, you know how whenever you got a table, the legs are splayed out a little bit so it won't rock? Well, that's why your steering axis, I mean, that's why your steering axis is out like that, because it makes it less likely to want to roll over. All right, steering axis inclination will affect the scrub radius of the tire. And on this, the, the camera lines actually intersect below the pavement. See if you're, if you're uh, that is going to have a lot to do, some people will put tires on a vehicle that are actually wider and the rim is offset different and all that. It changes the scrub radius and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, You've got to be able to understand these things. So notice where these lines are crossed. These lines are crossing above the pavement on this one. See that? You have negative scrub radius there. Here's your scrub radius. And you got a clamber line zero reference. So your steering axis inclination going right through the middle of that shock. Inclination is how much of an angle is that steering axis different from true vertical. Now this right here, are you going to be able to tell me what setback is? Are you? Look at the picture. Pay attention. Setback. Not hard to understand while well, caster angles can affect setback only slightly. Now excessive setback, crash related, can cause alignment pull to the side of the setback. The wheelbase will be shorter here than there. And if the wheelbase is shorter on that side, it's going to pull that way, right? If the rear axle is positioned correctly, and all the other parts of the system are in good working order, a setback condition will create different wheelbase measurements side to side. Now, this has to be taken care of if there aren't any bent parts that you can replace. This, the people at the uh, Continental Frame Straightener over there at the body shop will have to hook it up and use all their hydraulics to pull it back like it's supposed to be. And they got ways of doing that. All right. Now the strut, this, this top nut on this thing right here. Now, if you're ever taking a strut out of a car, you take these two bolts down out here and you take those three up here. You don't take that middle one out. This one guy dodged that, that strut. You know, got a thing where you're supposed to break a strut down and put it back together. And he dodged that worksheet all semester long, never did it. The next semester, he had to pull a strut out of the way to put a timing belt on a, you know, PT Cruiser or something, that's what the book said to do. And so he just took that nut off the top because he didn't know how to do it. And it went, the spring comes all the pieces and land all the way. It look, makes him look silly. You know, not to mention that you can get hurt like that. But anyway, struts carry the weight of the car higher in the body, it makes the car more stable. And you can see how carrying the weight of the car up here is going to make it less likely to turn over, right? Alignment reference. Front wheel alignment vehicle center. Line. 
This is good. See, there's your center line. That's how that's supposed to be. All right, look at your thrust angle. Like I was talking about on my truck. If that thing's crooked into there, your thrust angle's going to be off to the side. Are you getting it? You understand that? This is not good. Front wheel compensating for rear axle steer problem. There's your toe in. Front wheel set the thrust line. See, if you even if you lined it up so that all these tires are pointing the same way and it's driving down the road where the tires are pointing the same way, they're going to be dog tracking down the road like this. You ever seen a vehicle doing that? You'll start noticing it now. You'll see his truck going down the road and you can see the back tire and the front tire like this right here booking along there. They're just going down the road crooked. You know, because they've got something with the axle crooked on the truck or something. See, look at that one right there. See it dog tracking? That's what I'm talking about. You can see that tire and you can see that tire. And I was right behind that truck and he was driving straight down the road. He wasn't turning or nothing. <laughs> see the dog tracking? Hey, I'm lightning fast with my camera. I got one behind the seat and I go, and I put it back. I'm all done. You just have it ready? Huh? You just had it ready? I always do. I, show you. <laughs> I can show you. I gotta take pictures for y'all, okay? And uh, of course, I usually erase that tag. Now. But uh, anyway, we're moving the bearing and hub assembly to put a shim behind there. Is how you're gonna set your camera on some vehicles. Don't do that much. You know, see them shims? That's nah, not very really like. You know, we don't typically do a lot of that, but it is something you can do. But you gotta get the shims ordered in for that car and all that. That's if you're really serious about that. Shims galore for the rear are available. You need shims all over the place. Um, all right, just about every front wheel drive vehicle has got alignment adjustments for the rear wheels. You got a cam here. Look at this. I want you to pay attention to this because you need, need to know it. See, there's a, there'll be a cam in there, and basically, like, a, like I say, there'll be a cam like that on the lower control arms on the front on a lot of your Toyotas and some of the newer vehicles. I kind of like that, and it's really it's a lot easier to make your adjustments than it is when you're having to fool with shims or mess with the top up there. You know? I don't know why they didn't do that sooner. All right, uh, Toyota did it on their bigger. Uh, truck lines and all that, love it. but anyway, uh, center line and thrust line uh, should be running together. Got it? That's the end of the slide show. Now, did you go to sleep? Did anybody go to sleep? Did you learn anything? If I gave you a verbal exam, would you be able to answer my questions? You're going to be able to communicate. Can you tell me what setback is? One side set back a little bit. That's really easy to say, isn't it? But I don't have a mental picture of that. You're going to have to draw it for me. You may want to do that. Yep. Yeah. Can you draw steering axis inclination? Yep, that's like that. Okay. No way, I bet you can, because you're a note taker big time. Noah, Noah, Noah's taking notes the whole time I'm talking just about every time. I bet he's got a whole notebook for him. All right. Anybody got any questions or comments? And uh, are y'all hoping I'll just shut up so you can go to lunch? He's right. so, closing it. What we need to do is, oh, shoo. What we need to do is, uh, we're going to, you hear what she said? I like hearing you talk. <laughs> That's why she's sitting here looking with her eyes all glazed over when I'm talking. But anyway, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and break for lunch and we'll resume.